Good morning all, and I've completed my penny organ. Um, I've got, well these aren't pennies, these are actually uh, 50 yen coins, because very sensibly 50 yen coins already have a hole in the middle of them, so I don't need to drill through the head of some VIP. Now the 50 yen coins, or the pennies as I'm calling them, are connected to this 12 input uh, capacitive touch sensor, the MPR121, that in turn is connected to an Arduino Uno and I have a little piezo sounder which reproduces the uh, buzzing, the tone. Now at the moment I've got a tone in there but it's the same on each of the keys so it's not very musical. So in my Arduino sketch you can see I've got an array of integers here. They're all 440 at the moment. I thought I'd use 440 as my reference frequency so I need to change uh, these so that it becomes more musical. Here's my tone command, uh, tone on pin 8 of the Arduino, tones that's the array indexed by I, I comes from the touch sensor and 300 milliseconds duration. So how am I going to choose these frequencies? Well I've got 440 so how about uh, 550? And then, well, 660. Yeah, this is uh, looking promising. 770, 880, uh, 990. Uh, oh, well, I'll tell you what, let's go down to the other end. 330 and 220. Yeah, I think I'll use those frequencies. So here they are in my sketch, 220, 330, 440, and so on, right up to 990. Now there are some gaps in here, and uh, that's because of the way that I've wired the sensor here. Um, Alice sent me a sensor with input 6 and 7 not working. Naughty Alice. So I've recompiled the sketch with the new frequencies, and it sounds like this. That sounds quite musical, doesn't it? So I've written the frequencies under each uh, coin so that I know what they are. And I've discovered I can play some little tunes on this. Listen. No. That's an interesting sequence of notes, isn't it? I'm going to have to give that a name. Let's think. Uh, Arduino. Arpeggio. Yes. Perfect. And uh, if I play my arpeggio slightly differently... It sounds slightly unresolved. Unresolved compared to... Interesting. Now I'm starting to get a, a feeling of how these notes relate to each other. If I play 440 and 880, they sound very strongly related. And that makes sense because uh, one is twice the frequency of the other. So 220 fits into that as well. In fact, I'd go so far as to say they're all the same note. And there are other strong relationships as well. 44660 produce a strong relationship, same as 22330. In fact, that tune is the same as that tune. Uh, these notes have a reasonably strong relationship. 440 and 550. But 440 and 770, not so much, but they do have this interesting tension going on. So I've come up with this theory. Uh, tones that are related in the ratio 2 to 1, whose frequencies are 2 to 1, are so strongly related that they're actually the same note. Uh, tones that are in the ratio 3 to 2 have a very strong relationship. 7 to 4 not so much, almost a tense relationship. Musicality, it seems, is all about rational numbers. These uh, low numbered fractional ratios, two to one giving the strongest, three to two giving a strong, seven to four. As these numbers creep up, you get less and less musicality. Okay, time to name the notes. Now I started with 440, so I'm gonna name that A. And because I've decided that uh, 880 being twice the frequency of 440 is such a strong relationship that it's actually the same note, 
I'm going to call that A as well, uh, which of course also means that 220 is going to be called A. Now I was going to call 230, uh, 330B, but there's a problem with that, and that is that uh, 660 would then also be B, being twice the frequency of 330, but that leaves gaps here, so I think 550 will have to be B, 660 will be C, and then 330 will be C, but then it goes A, C, A, B, C, D, A, and then this octave up here, oh, I've just invented the name octave, by the way, I'm not sure where the oct bit comes from yet, um, would have even more in-between notes. So there's something wrong with this. Mathematically, it doesn't work. And I think the problem is because I've used an arithmetic series here, I'm simply adding 110 hertz to the previous frequency to generate the next frequency. Well, because um, a doubling of frequency indicates a restart of the lettered sequence, I think I'm going to need a geometric series. What I need is the same number of subdivisions between F and 2F as are between 2F and 4F, another doubling of frequency, and again between 4F and 8F. This is not a linear scale. This is actually a logarithmic scale or an exponential scale. Now let's say I want one mid frequency between these two frequencies. Let's call it F dash. Uh, I need to find a constant C, which when multiplied by F equals F dash, and when multiplied by F dash equals 2F. So what's C going to be? Well, another way of looking at this is that uh, F times C times C equals 2F. So F times C squared equals 2F. Uh, C squared equals 2F over F. The Fs cancel out. C squared is 2. C must be the square root of 2. Now, if I want to split uh, this range into uh, three sections, this is two sections, then I would have 2f times c times c times c is 4f. Um, and that's the same maths, but it would give me c cubed is 2. So c would be the cube root of 2. If I want to split it into four equal sections, I'd have 4f times c times c times c times c is 8f. And I'd end up with c as the fourth root of 2. So to split an octave or a doubling in frequency into n equal parts, n, uh, sorry, c equals the nth root of 2. And that works for all amount of dividing. Now I can see a problem here, and that is that any nth root will give you an irrational number. And yet I said earlier that strong musical note associations are, are created with rational numbers. In other words, these very low numbered uh, fractional relationships. So this system is not going to give me the rational numbers I want for good musicality. It's going to give me a whole bunch of irrational numbers. However, if I split these ranges down to enough subdivisions, then my irrational numbers should, with any luck, kind of line up with the rational numbers that I'm looking for. So how many subdivisions shall I use between each doubling of frequency? Well, I like the number 12. In fact, 12 is my favourite number, so I'm going to use the 12th root of 2. So I need a calculator that does nth roots and pound shop to the rescue. Look, xth root of y. So I think this is going to be just what I need. Let's give it a try. So uh, two uh, second function x root of y 12 equals ooh 1.059463094. Yuck. So by multiplying 440 hertz by this number 1.059463094, which is the 12th root of 2, I get 446, 493, 523, and so on. And if I do it 12 times, 
I get to 880, which is a doubling of the frequency. So I've uh, worked out all these frequencies and I've given them names, uh, A, B, C, D, etc. And I've had to miss a few out because, well, I've only got eight keys on my keyboard, so I've had to leave a few gaps. Um, so now I'm going to program in these frequencies into my Arduino sketch. So here are my new frequencies using the 12th root of 2. Um, I've had to round them down to whole integers because this tone command uh, only works with integer frequencies. So they're not going to be exact, but uh, there they are. So here are my uh, new notes, my new frequencies. Now, for some unfathomable reason, I've decided to start at C, not A, but they sound pretty good. That sounds all right, doesn't it? Pretty musical. And uh, now I'm going to play a little tune, and it goes like this. <sighs> now remember my strong rational number associations. Uh, 440, 660 was strong, 880 of course is an octave. Well, they are here. There's 880. Uh, 660 is kind of here. E is 659, so it's very close to 660. Um, 770 was that tense sounding note. Well, we've got 783, which is not far off. And uh, so there we have it. That's music. But I must say, I'm surprised that music ever really survived, because in terms of the maths, it's a giant compromise. It's horrible. It just doesn't work at all. Cheerio.